and it's clutter peeling time, baby. We are back in the scrapbook room. If you missed the first installment, I will link to that in the description so you can make sure you check that out. This is also a collaboration with Bonnie from A Beautiful Mess and Allie from Real Life with Allie. If you hear any crinkles in the background, those are courtesy of Colt. Oh my goodness, did you see that? <laughs> I just tucked a poster by the paper scraps because I wasn't ready to make a decision. So, um, yeah, that's how things are going here. <laughs> Uh, Colt is on his post-dinner tear where he roams around the house finding things to get into and unfortunately I have things for him to get into. This boy is something else I tell ya. Let's slow this down so you can take a look at the copyright. <laughs> this is some old stuff I've got. Old and new. All right, let's go back just a little ways to me squirreling away my little poster. That is not ideal, of course. <laughs> but I'm making a lot of decisions in this room, and it's okay for me to need to do something for later. That's why future me exists. She's going to solve that problem at some point. But it won't be now. I've got a fresh stack of cardstock that I need to go through. All of it is quite old and 90% of it is going to be donated. And anything that I am turning to the right to tuck behind me is going to donation. I've got this pile and that is the stuff that is staying. This red card stock, I don't know if I really needed it, but my gosh, it had a really cool, smooth texture. So I'm like, okay, <laughs> I'll keep it for the texture alone. Anyone else do that? Or is it just me? Did I mention that I am working in my scrapbook room? I'm not sure if I've mentioned that yet in this video. More paper. So that is what I'm doing. I am going through all of my supplies. I got to clean some stuff out, move some stuff off the premises <laughs> so that I can get back to scrapbooking in a room full of supplies that I want to use and will use. I need some organization in my life for sure. And organization isn't my strong suit. So that's where Bonnie and Allie come in. It's making me happy to think about other people being able to use the supplies that have been languishing in my stash for years because I just wasn't ready to accept that I wouldn't use them. That's why I'm letting go. I'm letting go of the supplies. I'm letting go of ideas about the kind of crafter that I thought I was. Letting go of the idea that maybe I'll use this someday. Even though I look at the item and think, I don't really want to use this. <laughs> One thing that I can get stuck in is thinking, this is how much money I spent on an item. And I try not to go too far down that road. The money is spent. I can't get it back. Sure, I can sell some supplies, but they won't go for full value. So I needn't think that I am going to recoup that whole cost. But like I said, the money is spent. But the question is, would I spend that money now? Do I like this item enough to buy it again? I found that question to be very helpful in the process of deciding what to keep and what to let go. If the answer was maybe, then I let it go. <laughs> Another question that helped me was, if this were gone right this second, would you miss it? Will I miss it? 
I had to admit to myself over and over again that in many cases, I wouldn't miss that item. I wouldn't miss it. So the question became, do I want items that I won't miss or do I want the space? You can probably guess the answer, but I'll also tell you the space is more important. These were some of the questions that I asked myself throughout the process and it did help me keep going, which is good because I have some epic sorting to do. Let us begin. I decided to get up from the desk and now I am sitting on my old faithful blue chair and going through some bags that needed to be sorted. Woo! And I'm all by myself. Don't wanna be. But anyway, <laughs> Allie and Bonnie had gone and it was time for me to do a bunch more sorting. So the bins on the left are the things I'm keeping. The ones on the right are things I'm letting go. Here are a bunch of alphabets and I am going to have a separate video where I go through all of my alphabets because I don't even know. <laughs> I ended up with so many. I mean, yeah, I'm not going to say that I could like put them down and they would go around the whole earth, but they might go across the U.S. Like, I don't know. I have a lot of alphabets. I'm very sorry that this footage is blurry. I'm not sure what my camera decided to focus on, but maybe it was lost without a face. I don't know. So weird. Here we have more paper sorting. Just like water bottles, there will always be more paper. Sad but true. Or, I don't know, I kind of like pattern papers, so I guess it's not so sad. But I do hope to finish going through it someday. <laughs> I loved that Bonnie had set up these bins. They are right behind the chair where I was sitting, and so I just had to sit down, go through them, knock them all out. Ah, flowers. Flowers were a scrapbooking craze in like 2015 or so. And I got into the craze too. And then I got out of it pretty fast. <laughs> I am not totally sure why. You'd think I'd really like them because they're dimensional. They're kind of fun. They're different, but yeah, I think I just kind of got a little tired of them. When I came across them here, I went ahead and let a bunch go. Like I would say way more than half. And that made me pretty happy. I tried to stay focused on my goal, which is letting the stuff I don't love go so that the stuff I do love has lots of room, and there's room for me too. <laughs> Looking at some of those flowers took me back to some scrapbooking expos that I went to, and I would get all these great deals, but you know, the deals are only so good as the supplies that you get, right? So if you get five sets of flowers for X amount of dollars. I can't even remember how much they were, but you only love two of them. Is it such a great deal? And they always did this thing where you couldn't, you had to pay like the full sale price if you didn't get all five, for instance. That's how they get you. <laughs> I also let go of a lot of embellishments that you have to kind of punch out. They are connected via tabs, but they're just such a pain and I have so many other die cuts. So I thought I'll let those go too. I decided I needed a couple of clear bins. This is because I am a butterfly. This is the style of organization that is best for me. And I will link 
to the quiz you can take to find out what your organizing style is. If you know yours, go ahead and drop that in the comments. Clear bins all the way, baby. That's for me. I got these bins for my page kits. And let me tell you what page kits are. I use them especially at crops. I will pull, sometimes I'll get a photo with it, but sometimes I'll just start with the paper and I'll put four or five different papers together that I feel like they coordinate. Now a full page kit will have embellishments with it. So I'll throw in some stickers, some flowers, some buttons, or whatever, whatever else I feel like might go with it. I'll add a few alphabets and ta-da! I have everything I need to make a scrapbook page, whether I am at a retreat or whether I just want to stay home but don't really want to think too hard about the putting the page together. I've put together dozens of these page kits and as I mentioned some of them have photos most of them don't. I made a bunch because I wanted to be prepared if I ever did another <laughs> retreat that kind of died when COVID came around. I'm hoping to get out to one again soon. Well, <laughs> I don't know how soon, but you know, someday. <laughs> And then I kept making them because they were kind of fun to make. It was fun to take one piece of paper and be like, okay, I'm going to see what I can put together with this. And that got to be fun. I started using page kits here at home when I would scrapbook. And then after a while, I felt a little too restricted with them but <laughs> I'm not gonna put them back or throw them out or anything. They'll still be useful for when I need to go out cropping or as I said, just don't wanna spend too much time finding supplies that coordinate. But I wanted to put all of my kits together in one bin and have it be a little bit more sturdy. I also got a bunch of more sturdy envelopes to put them in. They were in just kind of baggy type things with a zip across the top. So, you know, I decided that I will do the swapping out at a future point because right now I am very focused on where I need to spend my time and that is on sorting. I need to do as much sorting as possible because yeah, there's still a lot of stuff to go through. I am going to leave that task, switching out the baggies for the envelopes to future me. It's not a hard task, but just time consuming and I have better things to do right now, which is still going through paper. It's funny because I am of course aware at the time that I go through the paper that I have a lot of paper but it's kind of hidden in a different way as I am editing this, thinking, now, how many segments have I done of me editing paper? I don't want to know. I think there are just going to be some things that are just the main staples of each room. Like one room, it's t-shirts and leggings. I'm never going to stop finding them until I go through all of the boxes of doom um, in the living room I guess it was just water bottles and in the scrap room it is paper well this is round one I'm telling myself I'm sure I will let go of more as time passes now because of the amount of stuff I am letting go of the boxes are piling up here I am thinking about doing a crafting yard sale. Lots of people in my area love to scrapbook and make cards or other things. So I feel like that might be beneficial. At least it would cut down on the boxes that I need to take to donation. It would need to be soon though because nobody has got space or space. <laughs> 
to hold a bunch of boxes for any extended period of time. Right now, they're out on the kitchen table, and I want my table back. <laughs> if I do a yard sale, I will definitely film some and let you know how things go. But let's get back to this. It is day four. Bonnie is back and I was dragging around my sorry self all day. I don't really know what it was. I just wasn't feeling the greatest. I wasn't sick or anything, but I just wasn't feeling up to my usual self. I cut out several segments because I am just kind of staring in a stupor. <laughs> and this is also the day when a lot of realizations started hitting me. I talked about one of them in the last video, but I do want to just mention it again. And that is that I kind of realized that I just keep doing this pattern of I will go through my products and let go of a bunch of stuff from 10 or 15 years ago. And then the cycle just repeats. And that led me to realize how many supplies that I really have. It's a lot, y'all. And I recognize that it's a lot. A part of me really thought that maybe I would be able to go through the supplies, set aside a bunch that I could let go of, and then I, I would easily, keep in mind easily, be able to put the room back together somehow with Bonnie's help, <laughs> definitely. But somehow we'd be able to put everything back together and it would all be fine. But I realized that it was not going to be as simple as I thought. That's where I struggled a bit in the master bedroom as well. <laughs> but it's just a recurring theme. And what it's really showing me is the super overabundance of my stuff. I knew I had an abundance. I knew I had an overabundance, but I didn't think it was a mega overabundance. But that's really where we are. For years, really for years, I have thought I would have this scrap room. It would be, a lot of it would be contained in this big room but I would still have another section in the laundry room that would have like the sewing machine, the typewriter, maybe my die cutting machine and all of that would spill over into that room, but there would still be room left in there for other things as well. Maybe that will still happen. I don't know, but I think my end goal needs to be having everything in this room as far as scrapbooking goes. Even the typewriter, even the sewing machine, everything. But also that's something that I will be working toward. It's not something that will be all perfect after one session, after one round, but I really learned that I am going to have more rounds to come. And I mean, part of me, I guess, sort of knew that because that's the case with everything else in the house. This is round one, but there's that part of me that has had a certain idea in my mind of how things were going to go. And I've had that idea since I got this house. And sometimes it's hard to let go of that idea. Sometimes it feels like it was part of a dream. And letting go of dreams is hard. It is hard work. Especially when you put a lot of time and energy and effort into that dream. And then you look around and you're going through 
the 50,000th pile of paper and you realize that the storage that you had for stickers is overflowing and you know that you're not through with sticker sorting there is more and more of those to come as well and it's just hard when you have an idea in your mind of how much you'll need to let go of and you realize that you're going to need to let go of more maybe even a lot more This message really kept being reinforced throughout the day because it turns out I have outgrown many of my pockets of organization. As someone who is chronically disorganized, I am proud of my little pocket. These pockets mean that even when I am surrounded by boxes and water bottles, I have bins where my stickers are supposed to go. In the past, they have fit in those places. I mean, maybe a little tightly at times. True, but they have fit. But now I'm uncovering more supplies. And in some cases, in some categories, many more supplies. And I hear what some of you are saying, or at least thinking, which is that this is the beauty of the container concept. You have a container and you let go of whatever does not fit into it. This is a difficult concept for someone who is always a little extra. <laughs> Always seems to have a little extra, but this is my scrap room, y'all. I, I'm struggling. There is a place in this room for more storage, and I've always wanted it to be more storage. Right now, there is a huge desk that's in the way, and that desk is not going to be able to come out of the way until I... All of the boxes of doom are out of the laundry room. This was my last burst of energy on day four. It was after lunch and I remember I just didn't feel well and I took a little nap and still didn't feel well. So I laid down some more. <laughs> It's a rough day, that's all I can say, and I finally started feeling a bit better, and so I thought, let's do it, let's make this last push, and that's what I did. Right now, I am getting a bunch of <laughs> cords together. I need cords. <laughs> I already have a whole bag of cords, <laughs> but... I'm glad I have that bag because I have needed to go back and find a few. So I'm keeping the bag of cords until this whole house is done and I have figured out if any, any of my items are missing more cords. There is still more that got unburied and so I am figuring it all out doing my best to really get this clean. I slowed this footage down so you could hear me and Bonnie talk a little bit and also there are some kind of cool sounds when we are putting stuff back on the shelf here. Yeah, like they color across there. Oh, some of them do. Yeah, some of them have it and some of them don't. Do you want me to put the ones up there that have sure. the... Okay. Why does that not they have fit? to go in the rows in between. Oh, why does oh because <laughs> I see. Okay, so the, this one can go down yeah. probably there. Yep.
Oh, most of them are labeled. Right in front of your oh, camera. <laughs> I could listen to the clicking sound of those ink pads going on the shelves like for hours. <laughs> but then I do like ASMR. Bonnie and I were talking about how some of my ink pads have labels on the side and then some don't because at some point I misplaced my labeler. I talked about this storage in the last video about the scrapbook room. I didn't realize it at the time, but I talked about how there is a lot of outgrowing of this particular storage piece. So I want to kind of focus it a little bit more. So it's just ink pads and we are stopping again because here is a little guest. <laughs> It's Colt who is still after that two-year-old cookie that is in that trash bag. Poor guy. He is just trying to live his best life and I keep coming in and ruining it. <laughs> Poor kid. At the time, Bonnie and I were thinking this was our last day in this room for uh, at least a month or so. And I was really pushing to try and finish the table. I'm happy to say that her schedule freed up. So we are going to be able to have another day. That is pretty cool. But anyway, you'll just see me start wading through some of these piles on the table. Now I put down some sticker books because I realize I don't use them that much but they do have stickers that I really like in them. The stickers are just a little bit smaller than I would like, but I think they would be perfect for the peeling away the clutter scrapbooks. So I'm going to put them with the scrapbook supplies for that book. Not that I'm going to limit myself. I can use whatever supplies I want to with that book, but I'm going to show you in a separate video me putting together a little kit just to make things more portable so I can take it into the living room while I want to watch TV and work on the book then. I have a couple of ideas for storage that might be interim storage while I continue to go through products. Maybe I will create new pockets of organization. I know that our hope and plan is to get the scrap room whipped into some kind of shape that I can use it and make full use of as many of the supplies that I have as possible. But as I mentioned before, this room will not be able to be complete until I can shift the desk into the other room and set up a little bit more storage in this one. What I'm doing right now is going through that aqua basket that has lots of just miscellaneous die cuts and I'm seeing if there are anything that I can split up and put somewhere else because if that basket is totally jam-packed it makes it really hard to go through the items in it so I was able to weed out some items and that helped. 
I have still got more desk clearing to do. And I did find that I had a lot more, <laughs> more footage of me sitting around trying to figure out what the heck I'm doing. I think it was because all of these realizations that I've talked about, they didn't come kind of like peacefully throughout the week in a very calm and mellow way. No, <laughs> they all pretty much hit me on day four. And maybe that is part of why I wasn't feeling so good. Epiphanies are helpful and sometimes even life altering, but they aren't always easy. They just aren't. Hi, Colt. <laughs> Another little visit. Clay was under the, under the desk on his puffy pillow. I remember that Bonnie got a really cute picture of him, so I'm sure that will turn up in one of her videos. But that's why he wasn't in this video. He was getting his own much needed rest. I've always had a lot of respect for Bonnie, but I just watched her first video on this. <laughs> Whoa! Like, not only did she do a huge amount, which I mean, I knew she did, but she was working behind me, so I wasn't seeing it like in process. So that part was amazing, just being able to see like all of what she did. And then on top of it, to bring all of that footage together and tell a story the way that she does, it's just, I'm in awe, really. I am never dealing with as much footage as she is, but I had a lot of footage for this and it was hard. <laughs> and really, in a lot of ways, all I did was just keep speeding up <laughs> the footage. So mad respect and just love for Bonnie. I just can't even, can't even say it <laughs> enough. I'm about to get up and shuffle my way over. It looks like a shuffle because of the speed. And I had Colt and Clay's attention because I grabbed a bag of their dog treats <laughs> at the same time I grabbed some other stuff. <laughs> Trying to teach Colt to uh, not pounce on his brother when he's trying to get toward me. Work in progress. <laughs> progress, not perfection. I grabbed those sticker books off the table and put them with the rest of my supplies that I am going to use for my little travel kit, <laughs> travel scrapping kit. And I brought over a new batch of stuff. And here's where I really start kicking up the high gear and I am letting more stuff go. Check out this one. This one's been in my stash forever. <laughs> and yeah, I'm keeping it. Why am I like this? <laughs> in general, I found that I was letting go more of the older products, but every now and then I'd do a switcheroo where I'd come across a batch of new and I'd be like, you know, I not sure why we got this. I came across another page kit. So many different things. And as I was going through, I just kept putting things that I am keeping in the box to the right. As that box filled, I started thinking, should I start on micro organizing at this point yet or not so much? At first, I really just thought, you know, never mind. It's all good. I'm just going to keep on going. There I came across some of the oldest supplies in my collection. Hallmark stickers. Oh, 
it really took me back. It took me back in time. I remember going to Hallmark to get more supplies for scrapbooking. This was before there were scrapbook stores and scrapbook magazines. I am going to let those go. I can't really imagine how I would use them now. It's funny how the the old, old stuff <laughs> is mixed in with more new stuff. But let's be honest, a lot of this stuff is older. And more alphabets. <laughs> that is going to be an epic sorting video. I'm letting go of collage looking stickers just aren't really my style. Some old alphabet stickers I even let go of. I'm like, you know, they've been in my stash forever. They don't even need to wait till we get to that epic, <laughs> the epic sort. I'm just going to let go of them now because I know I don't want them. Some memorabilia, more paper. Yeah, always more paper. <laughs> and then I thought, wait, let's go ahead and separate out the scraps. Since I do store them separately from the full sheets. I'm going to do a paper sorting video as well. Because I'm sorting paper now, but I do have a bunch of paper in the file folders. And that needs to be gone through as well. And we are about to embark on the garbage bag tug of war. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why Colt loves garbage bags so much. It's so funny. Oh, it cracks me up. Pets have their personalities and their quirks. Cupid loved chewing on cardboard and I made a scrapbook page about that. So I'm sure I'm ultimately going to end up doing a scrapbook page about Colt's love of garbage bags. <laughs> Which I understand if there's a two-year-old dog cookie in there, but when it's just a plain old garbage bag with nothing food related in it, Ladies and gentlemen, we have reached a very important stage. We are starting day five. Yay! <laughs> this is when I finally started to feel like I could see my way clear to the end of this project. Is there still a lot to do? Yes. Do I feel like we can do it? Also, yes, we are getting to the micro organizing. I found a bunch of really cool bins at Target and I'm using those to sort into. I'm about to point out one of my biggest regrets. I try not to have regret because it really doesn't help in the long run, but I will just accept that I have learned a valuable lesson in this. I bought this binder several years ago and every month I would get new pages to put in the binder and I don't even know if I have flipped through this binder. <laughs> and to be honest, I'm not sure if I'm even going to be able to give it away, let alone sell it. But facts are facts. I'm not going to recoup the cost. <laughs> I'm not losing the money now by giving it away. I lost the money when I actually spent it on the item. The money is long gone. Time for it to go out. And I've got lots of other things to sort through in the meantime. So let's just get going on that. I've got some sheets that go in, a planner that I have, 
I'm not sure if I want to keep the planner or not, but I thought I'd at least keep them together. So if I let them go, they can all go together. I've got lots of die cuts, envelopes, more envelopes, <laughs> some transparent embellishments, more alphabets. Oh, alphabets, man. I do not even know when, how many times I have bought an alphabet thinking you can never have too many alphabets. <laughs> Um, yeah, there, there can be too many alphabets. There really, really can. If I ever buy another alphabet, there had better be unicorns and gold and gems shooting out of it. <laughs> Otherwise, I have any possible alphabet I could ever, ever need. I've decided to use this cute little bin on my desk to hold adhesive or maybe it'll be near my desk. Part of my problem has been that I have always wanted to have the supplies I use most right next to me, but there's only so much space right next to me. <laughs> and I have so many supplies, so I've decided I'm going to take a new approach to my scrapbooking. I'm going to get a basket. I'm going to make a circle of the room and say, okay, here's the photo I'm using. This might look good with this. This might also look good with this. And I'll just circle the room, find supplies that I think I might like. And then whatever doesn't work out, I'm going to have a separate basket that is right by my desk and I can put the items I don't use in this basket, also known as not just put it in a pile on my table. And then I will, at the end of my crafting, I will take the basket and put the supplies back where they belong. My new goal. I don't expect to have a perfect tabletop. I'm going to face facts. I'm a little bit cluttery, sometimes more than a little bit, but I'm striving to improve. And I am really excited about this new idea <laughs> and about the idea of keeping it real. Like one of the things that I have always wanted to do on this channel is keep things real. So I'm facing facts. I'm not going to have that cute little scrapbook space where I could just reach everything from my desk. Nope. <laughs> I have too many supplies for that. I've been scrapbooking too long for that. But I can have a space where I make the supplies work for me and I make full use of my supplies. And I actually use some of the things that I have bought, such as all of these chipboard alphabets. This bin was overflowing. I initially thought, you know, I went through this a few years ago. I probably won't find too many more to let go, but let's see what I can do. And you know what? I am getting better at being realistic about what I'll use. And again, this is still a first pass. So I'll probably let go of more down the road, but I let go of a lot more than I thought I would. Unfortunately, my sell slash donate bin is behind me, so you can't see everything that I'm putting in it right now. The box next to me is stuff that I am keeping, and so now I'm just putting it all back in. And I went from an overflowing basket to a basket with some space in it. Am I planning to fill that space up? Nope. I don't need more chipboard alphabets. I want to use them up. So I'm moving on. This cute little basket. <laughs> I guess it's a bin. It is one that has lots of pocket page 
cards in it. It's my first pocket page storage. And it came over in the move and got buried behind a bunch of stuff. So it never actually made it to the rest of the pocket page cards that kind of grew when I came over here. <laughs> oh, geez. So I'm finally doing that and I'm separating things out. I use tags separately, so I'm setting aside tags. I have a separate place for labels, so I am moving the labels. I'm putting all the pocket page cards together and I let go of a bunch of these too. I am continuing with the pocket page cards while Bonnie is doing all sorts of stuff running rings around me in energy as usual. <laughs> I love her. She's the best. Now I've decided to basically get rid of like 95% of the cards that have rounded edges. Maybe it's weird to let go of the rounded edges one, but I just don't love that look. Those cards just languish with me, so it's time to just let them go. I started the voiceover for this video about a week ago and it's funny how as time has passed I have kind of changed a little bit. I'm a little bit more positive. I don't feel like I need to let go of 98 million more things in order to make this a workable room and that has given me energy and motivation. I am still going to continue to go through all of my supplies because I want the items that I keep to have a little bit of breathing room which might sound a little weird but again it's just making sure that the stuff that I don't use goes so that I can more easily find the items that I will use. And I find that it's quite helpful to think about the supplies going to someone who will enjoy them, someone who will appreciate them. I'm super curious about when you donate or sell items, do you think about that? Like how the supplies will go somewhere where they will be used? Or do you not really think too much about that and are just like, let's get the item out of the house. I don't need to worry about where it goes. There's no right or wrong there. I'm just curious. Now I am basically sorting them even further. I'm sorting them into the ones that are the right size and shape to go in with the other pocket page cards. There's also some that are smaller or just kind of different shapes and I'll put those in with some labels and then I'm I've got a pile of tags and then a pile of stuff that I am letting go. Somewhere in this time frame, Bonnie looked over at me and was like, you are really starting to fade a little bit. <laughs> and I, and that's when I realized that I hadn't really eaten today. <laughs> so yeah, lunch, <laughs> lunch, and then my nap. Bless her. I love how non-judgmental she is. She just lets me go and take my breaks or take my nap and keeps on going. We learned a while ago though that Colt does not like it when the door is closed to the scrapbook room when he's not in there. So we leave the door open but even though he stays with me usually. <laughs> Oh, funny guy. So here I am finishing off this particular one and here's a bin that can be used for something else or donated. It's pretty small so I'm not sure what I would use it for but I'm going to keep it around just until the room is finished because you just never know. Maybe something will pop up and I'll say, oh, that bin is the perfect size. Meanwhile, Bonnie has found some more stuff for me to sort. Now I'm starting up again and Bonnie had set up this whole sorting station, which is awesome. <laughs> I love it so much. This was going to be my die cutting tower or my die cut 
not the die cutting because the machines are going to go somewhere else. But the die cuts themselves are going to go on this tower eventually. And I love how she set it up. And it's awesome. She had this whole sorting station set up for me. I don't know. I don't know. Bonnie's just a miracle worker. And like she has the most amazing connections. Like when she arrived in the morning, she's like, well, I met up with this person and she had a bunch of the bins from her scrapbook room that she doesn't need anymore. So she brought like a whole porch full of bins <laughs> and brought them in as we needed them. It was so awesome. Here I am realizing that I have way too many doilies. Doilies are another item where I was like, oh, I, I can always use a doily. Well, maybe I can use them, but I really need to use them more because I have a whole like compartment full of doilies. One of my scrapbook buddies is a big fan of doilies. So, <laughs> so I'll have to show her this bin and say, ha ha, do you have as many as I do? <laughs> Oh <laughs> shoot. I am sorting things into these new containers that I got and they are not clear but the cool thing is that the items stick up out of them so that I can see what they are. So it's the next best thing to having a clear bin here and I've got I bought a bunch of these I'll return whatever I don't use, but I kind of feel like I might end up using them all. I love how these are coming together because I had stickers and some other items in some bins that were about the same size, but they didn't have these little dividers and the dividers help things to stand up a bit. And look, I have another shirt. <laughs> Just what I wanted, another t-shirt. Oh, good grief. I have to admit, though, I did wonder where that one was. I was like, I, I know I still have it. Didn't give it away. So where is it? And now I'm coming across photos, some cards that I have made but not actually used. So I'm going to have this great card collection where I can send cards to people. I've been wanting to do that for, you know many years and I will finally be able to make my card sending dreams come true. Here is a book. I am finding things that need to get moved to a different room. That's just part of the process. Things, <laughs> there are things in each room that belong elsewhere. I can't remember if I mentioned that this white setup here used to be in the living room and I ended up switching it out for a gray cart that was here in the scrapbook room. And yeah, it's it's plastic, so it's not super strong, but it will hold paper die cuts, which is what I decided I wanted to use it for. And I love that it's on wheels too, so I can wheel it right next to my desk if I want or wheel it away <laughs> when I don't. I love how you're getting to see Clay more in this video. He wasn't really around in the first one as much as in this one. Here I am in a bit of a stupor. <laughs> But now I've decided let's slow down and take a little cookie break. These are the cookies that my beloved Cupid loves so much. And then they backed into the tripod and timber. Things are coming down. <laughs> Enjoy the drama in slow motion. <laughs> All right, so look who came and saved the day. Bonnie, as usual, she always saves the day for me. <laughs> I love it. We are getting to the end of this video, and I have to say a huge 
thank you to Allie and Bonnie who helped me out so much. I never, ever, ever would have been able to accomplish this so quickly on my own. This room would have taken me months and months and months. Special thank you to you though for watching this long video and hanging in there with me as we didn't quite finish in the first one. I'm going to admit we're still not quite finished today, but I'm really, really pleased with the results that we have so far. Bonnie is in fact coming back to help again, so you can look forward to that. I did end up removing a bunch of footage of me solo sorting because otherwise this would have been a behemoth. I would definitely be in probably the hour 40 minute range. I have hung on to that solo sorting footage though and I am going to put it all together in another video for you next week. Just keep in mind that all this footage has taken place over time. Bonnie and Allie first came over the third week of March and I have been working in between all of their visits to sort in between so that there was more to do and go through when they returned. And I'm just going through whatever Bonnie brought over to me. I've got a basket my little Avengers bag is packed with stuff that I am moving to different rooms. I ended up putting photos in the green bag. And there's some other stuff that I know where the storage is, so I am setting that aside. There's more paper. <laughs> there's just more of all kinds of stuff. But my mood definitely lifted after my realizations. The realizations are still there with me, but now I felt like, okay, I'm going to get there. It's not as far away as I feared it was, it was at one point, and I still have some items to go through to get to the end of round one. So you're going to see a modified after. There is going to be, I would say, an initial after and then a bit of a later one that will come a little further down the road when more things have been gone through and put away and I've set up the little dog station <laughs> wherever it needs to be and moved the fireplace wherever it needs to be. Although we're getting into the season where I'm going to need to pull out a fan, so that will be fun. I have used a box fan in the past. I also have a rotating one. I'll have to see which one is better for this room, but I really would like to set up a nice little spot where the dogs can rest and hopefully come to enjoy this room a bit more. I will not be using Cheerios <laughs> to lure them in here <laughs> anymore because my goodness, I had a lot. The Cheerios were really for Cupid. He was such a vocal guy and he would definitely make his voice known. I would get him in here because of the cookies, but he, once he was done with the cookies, he kind of wanted to go. He would lay there for, you know, half an hour or so, but yeah, that's, that's when I would start throwing Cheerios at him to get him to maybe stay for a bit longer. I miss him still. I wish that he were here to enjoy this room, but I do have Clay and the new guy Colt who can come in here with me and uh, we'll scrapbook together or I'll scrapbook while Clay sleeps and Colt tries to get into things because that's what he does. <laughs> Such a cutie and a rascal. He definitely keeps me on my toes.
let's start with the before. <laughs> this is where we started. Before Bonnie came in the third week of April. Uh, yeah, there's clothes, lots of die cuts, and lots and lots of boxes. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> I uh, I can't even um a bunch of clothes that <laughs> were just from the washer <laughs> I had a little trail that I basically made <laughs> right before Bonnie came so she wouldn't fall on the plastic bags <laughs> on the stair on the two stairs and now let's look at the after oh wow i decided that i wanted to use some little shelves for page display here is my table bonnie put she hung up those magnet boards on the walls so I can actually access them. More of my table. It's looking so good now. We're still a work in progress, remember? There are my water bottles. <laughs> uh, you knew there had to be some, right? There's this piece. I think I might do something a little bit different right in this spot. But, you know, that's for future me. That's a problem for future me to deal with. Here are where the shelves stand right now. There's still some sorting to do. So we have a sorting station set up here. It's still ready to go. There's this area here in the corner. It's being used to sort as well. But once that is done, I will place some things on there. <laughs> oh, I'm giving you a little close up of some of these things I'm sorting. And let's curl around the room a little bit. Bonnie put together all of these boxes full of my finished pages. She put them in chronological order for me so I and some friends can just stuff them into albums. I'm excited. Here is this bit. And now you can see those display shelves a little bit better at a different angle. It's just right by the door. I will put my pages up there. So excited about that. And there we are. That's where things stand right now. I'm so pleased with how things turned out. I am not sure how much trash and recycling went out. I do know that I took out that stuff for three different days of trash taking so it was a lot a lot this message is for you the one who thinks that you can't let go of things that you love that you need to hold it all tightly to you i loved all of the items in my scrapbook room but i was able to let go of, I don't even know how many boxes this is. 12? And I did this day after day, letting go of a little at a time. I want you to see how much a little at a time can add up. You can make a difference.